All right, so what I have here is my lunchbox repeater. The idea of this is a five watt mobile repeater that can be chained up at the top of a hill whenever I go on hikes or whatever. And its value is less than $100. Uh, one, because it's just a challenge to keep it at that price point. And two, if somebody does end up stealing it, it's, it's a good chunk of change, but it's not completely detrimental. Um, I don't have like the best locks or cable on here, but it's mostly just to prevent people from walking off with it. Uh, what I like to do with my vehicle and also this whenever I go on a hike is I leave a waterproof note. Um, in this case, just what it is, it's the lunchbox repeater, my receive and transmit for the um, settings for your radio, uh, the CTCSS tone, and the dates that it's going to be up here. In case somebody finds it, they know what it is, and they know, like, if a game warden or whatever finds it, or a ranger, they know that it's not going to be here forever. My, my intentions is only overnight. So basically what it's comprised of is two Baofeng UV5Rs with the extended battery, the new one, with USB-C 2.0 charging. Um, and it doesn't need the extended battery, I just needed something with USB-C so I could have the extended battery packs. Uh, if my math is right, these should last about a month um, with casual use. Uh, I, with just these batteries alone, I tested it at home at about one week long and I would just, there it was mostly just idling and every couple of hours at work, I would just go outside and um, do a, a quick check to see if they're still connected um, and also to, to make them transmit every once in a while. On this end, I have the transmit radio. Um, the way I set these is they are two entirely different flashes of uh, memory channels. Um, one of them is strictly transmit, one of them is strictly receive. Uh, the key is on the transmit side, you want the Roger beep. Of course you can't hear it right now. And then on the receive side, you do not want the Roger beep. That's super critical and I'll go over that in a second. For the batteries, I have these Mophies that I got on sale on Amazon. Um, if you search for used like new, sometimes you can catch stuff super discounted. I got each of these for, I think like $15 each and they normally go for $60. Uh, Mophies are really bad battery packs. They look nice, they feel nice, uh, but these are one of their more recent battery packs and they offer a one amp output, which is convenient for this case, a 2.4 amp and a USB-C at three amp, but it's all five volts. Even though this is a brand new battery pack, it's still USB 2.0-ish standards. USB 2.0 ends at 2.4 amps. This one's three amps, uh, but still, there's no fast charging with this battery pack that they're still asking $60 for, brand new. Uh, so for cell phones, they're horrible batteries, but in this case, because they offer a straight five volt, one amp output, they're actually perfect for these cheap radios because these cheap radios like one amp, five volt charging. To make all the magic happen, I have this K1 repeater box. If you just search on Amazon for uh, K1 repeater box, you're gonna get like a dozen of these. I just got the one that would actually get to me within the same month. It was $22 instead of 19 or whatever, but uh, this one was at least shipping from the US and not China. They're all basically the same generic stuff. Uh, this is bi-directional, which is why I say only have the Roger Beep on the transmit side. Um, so it doesn't matter what direction, what, what end goes into what radio, it's bi-directional. So the reason that you only want Roger Beep on the transmit radio is if you put it on the receive radio, the receive radio will receive the transmission, and when you're done transmitting, it will do the Roger Beep. But then that sends a Roger Beep through here, and it keys it up, and because this is bi-directional, it somehow ends up in a loop, an infinite loop, and yeah, it, it took me a couple of days to troubleshoot that until I realized it's because the Roger Beep was on the receive side, and not on the transmit side. And you do want a Roger Beep on the transmit side 
because it ba it's basically a beacon that lets you know that you connect it to the repeater when you're not next to it. For my antennas, I have these Abri tactical whips. Um, they're 48.8 inches long, and that's great because that means they're 5 eighths wavelength in the two meter band, approximately. Um, from my personal experience, half wavelength is better when you have line of sight, but up here in the mountains, 5 eighths seems to perform a lot better than half wavelength. Some of my more experienced repeater build builders out there yeah. might find this as an issue, having the transmit and receive antennas right next to each other instead of using one antenna without a duplexer. Uh, but with five watts, even on the same band and with the normal repeater split or offsets, I haven't had any interference issues. But if you are still afraid or if you are using a more powerful repeater, you can do split band, um, which I do have presets in these for split band, which basically means one receives on two meter, the other transmits on 70 centimeter. Um, and that should split the frequency enough to where at least a good radio won't even be phased by it. The problem with pretty much every Baofeng ever made is that they are not super heterodyne. They get front end overload. Even super heterodyne radios can get front end overload. Um, and it could mess with them if the transmit side was amplified. But at five watts, I, in the one week that I've tested it, hasn't had any issues but i still have the option there um to split it i just don't feel like doing that um because right now it's two meter which up here in the mountains seems to work better uh this is my transmit radio so the frequencies might look a little weird uh but basically i have a bunch of presets so I have this on the receive side, so the frequency might look a little weird, but basically I have a total of 24 different setups. So I have four two meter bands, uh, four two meter to 70 uh, cross bands, four 70s, uh, four 70 crossovers to from 70 to two, and then your eight GRMS uh, repeater channels and they're all the same CTCSS tone uh, one two three just to keep things simple I was gonna leave them uh, squelch open but since these are battery powered I don't want them picking up everything another annoying thing with basically every Mophie battery I've ever had which I've had three different models is they do not automatically turn on when you plug them in you have to tap this button every time to turn them on which my biggest fear is that these batteries fully charge these turn off and then when the battery starts going down on the radios they don't turn back on so i might have to get different batteries for this so yeah that is the hundred dollar uv5r lunchbox repeater i'm about to go get it set up and that'll be it for this video so that's pretty much it i intended this for pine trees uh there's no pine trees up in this area um, so the antennas are kind of a little mangled going through the trees, but at this elevation it should work. And on my hike, I'll just continue to key it up and see how it's doing. I also have someone down in town that's probably about 10 to 12 miles away, and I'll see if he can also key it up and reach it. So that was it for the lunchbox repeater build. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, main reason I have two batteries in there and everything's completely separate is the antenna neutral the audio neutral or antenna ground negative whatever you want to call it the audio neutral because it's not a balanced cable and the battery neutral or negative is all the same uh, i had a problem when i initially mounted it in a 30 cal ammo can i was getting a really bad audio ground loop to where the noise floor was so high on the line that's supposed to be neutral or it, it was so low because it was turning into a negative voltage um, that the positive voltage wasn't creating any audio um, unfortunately this trip I got it to ping like a beacon so I, I definitely could reach it from a peak two miles away 
um, on the other. This is on the one side of a hill and that's on the other side of another hill. So there's two major obstacles. Um, unfortunately, as I was showing it off, um, the rain's messing with my screen. As I was showing it off, I accidentally left the volume all the way low on the uh, receiving side. So I wasn't getting any voice through. I was just getting uh, the Roger beep at the end of every transmission. But it works, it was a successful test. Uh, if it wasn't for the volume thing, I would probably find somewhere to leave it for the rest of the week and then I can test it from home, like a, a better peak. Uh, but otherwise, that's good enough for now. Eventually, I want to add an audio loop that says my call sign in Morse code every 10 minutes and then occasionally says something in voice. That way I can use it as like a propagation beacon. As I'm hiking, I can listen to the audio quality diminish. The further I get away, the more ridges I go over. But yeah, that's it.